RC circuits to short-term and long-term behavior. Here we have an example of an RC circuit that's a little bit more complicated than the last one that I showed you. We've got uh, multiple loops, two resistors instead of one, and because it's more complicated, eh, the math that I showed you last time is not going to apply to this circuit. Now there are ways to find in great detail mathematically what is going on with the circuit, but they require differential equations, and that's above and beyond the scope of a typical introductory level physics class. So instead of doing that, I'm going to show you a couple of special cases that you can calculate even without all of that fancy math, namely the short-term and the long-term behavior. I'm going to use a couple of formulas pretty regularly throughout this presentation. Of course, the voltage on a resistor is equal to the current times the resistance, and then the charge on a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage on the capacitor. So, short-term behavior. What do we mean by this? Short-term refers to a very brief time frame, a um, couple of milliseconds or less, and it usually references some event that occurs with the circuit, such as closing or opening a switch. So, we close the switch, say in this case, and then for the first millisecond or two after that switch is closed, what is going to be going on with the circuit? What's the voltage? What's the current in the various elements throughout this circuit? How do we determine those things? Well, we need to remember that in the short term, the voltage on any capacitor is effectively going to be a constant. And that's because the voltage on a capacitor depends on the charge, and it takes time for charge to flow into or out of the capacitor. And if we limit the time, then um, that's not going to change very much at all. So you can imagine, you know, if a millisecond is too long, you can just shrink that to a thousandth of a millisecond. You can get yourself a situation where the charge and the voltage on the capacitor are effectively constant. And what that means is that we can treat the capacitor as if it were an ideal electromotive force. So we treat it just like this voltage source over here. It's got a constant voltage and zero internal resistance. What about long-term behavior? Well, by that we mean um, a long time after any sort of change has occurred. It could be a couple of hours later or, realistically, a couple of seconds later. In the long term, the circuit will settle down into some steady state where everything is constant. The voltage in everything is a constant, and the current through everything is a constant. Now, a constant voltage in a capacitor implies constant charge, and that's not going to stay constant unless the current is zero. So in the long term, the current through every capacitor is always going to be zero, and of course the voltage will be constant as well. So let's look at a few examples. Let's consider what happens in this circuit here immediately after we close the switch, thus allowing current to flow through the circuit. Where do we begin? Well, let's start by saying that the voltage on the capacitor is zero. That's going to be the case nine times out of ten in these RC circuit problems. In this particular case, we know that it's going to be true because before the switch was closed, the, uh, this whole left-hand part of the loop was effectively out of the circuit altogether. This was the only circuit we had. We had a C and an R that were in parallel. If there was a non-zero voltage on this capacitor, it would set up a voltage in the resistor, current would flow, and it would keep flowing until it drained off all the charge in the capacitor. So that's almost always what you're going to be seeing initially, is something like that. So VC equals zero. Now, the C is in parallel with R number 2, so that means the voltage in resistor number 2 is also zero. They're always the same voltage when the two elements are in parallel. Now we can find the current through resistor number 2 because the voltage and the current are proportional, and in this case, one of them is zero, and therefore, the other one must be zero. What happens with uh, V1? Well, if you... Um, Look at the voltage drop going around the circle, whether you go around this way or whether you go around this way. We've got 100 volts here, we've got 0 volts there, we've got 0 volts there. All 100 of these volts must be accounted for in resistor number 1. We'll have a voltage drop from 100 down to 0. That's the only thing that makes sense, and therefore V1 is 100 volts. Effectively, what happened here is because there was no uh, voltage on this capacitor, it behaved just like a, a wire coming through here, allowing current to freely flow. So that's why I drew that there. And you can see how the current would just naturally 
flow through there and avoid that, and so on and so forth. So V1 equals 100. We can calculate the current through resistor number 1 using the formula. 100 volts, uh, 50 ohms, and therefore I equals 2, 2 amperes. So this current comes around, we have 2 amperes here, it's going to split. It can either go through the resistor or go through the capacitor, but it's not going to go through the resistor because we already determined I2 is 0, therefore all of the current must flow down through the capacitor, and that means the IC is equal to 2 amperes as well. Now look at the next situation. A long time after this switch has been closed, what happens? Well, a long time later, we settle into this state. No great shock. We said it before, IC should be zero. And because the current is zero, nothing's going to flow through here. Effectively, this loop reduces down to a simpler case of just a single EMF with two resistors in series and not much else, just a single loop there. So, with this single loop, we can determine the net resistance for the entire loop. It's just the sum of the two, because they're in series. That's 50 plus 50. That's going to be 100 ohms. And with that information, we can find the current. We have the entire circuit has an EMF of 100 volts on it. The entire resistance is 100, so current equals 1. And that's the same through resistor number 1 and through resistor number 2. They are both in series with this EMF, and that's got a 1 ampere, and so does all the rest. From here we can find the voltage on number 1 and number 2, and hey, it's just 50 times 1, so it's going to be 50 volts on number 1, and it's going to be 50 volts on number 2. And last but not least is VC, but hey, C is in parallel to R2, and if R2's got 50 volts, then VC must also have 50 volts. So suppose we get this far, and then we open the switch again. Then what? Well, we're looking at case three here. When we open the switch, this whole part of the circuit is out of the loop, and we're left with a single capacitor with a single resistor. Looks like this. Initially, the capacitor voltage is going to be 50, because that's what it was here, and it's going to take some time for this to change one way or the other, and we don't have much time because we're talking about fraction of a millisecond after we were here. So the initial VC is whatever it was, in this case 50, and we can continue from there. Here's resistor number 2, it's in parallel to the capacitor, and therefore V2 equals 50. With a voltage of 50 and a resistance of 50, no great shock that the current is 1 ampere. And these two are not only in parallel, they're also in series, and whenever things are in series, they have the same current, and therefore the capacitor will also have 1 ampere current. And it kind of goes without saying that I1 is going to be equal to 0. This uh, resistor number 1 and this EMF over here, over here, they're out of the loop, there's no current happening over there. So, what happens a long time after the switch has been opened? Well, um, everything just kind of drains to zero. It's long-term behavior, so IC is going to equal zero, and resistor 2 is in series, so I2 will also be zero. Then V2 is proportional to I2, so they're both zero, and last but not least, C is in parallel to the resistor, so it has the same voltage, and therefore VC equals zero. And we have come around full circle right back to where we started.